you clicked on this video because you're interested in how I trick out my black rifles. However, you're probably not such a bigoted discriminatory punk that you don't care about shotguns like this shotgun. Sportsman's Guide sponsored this video. I bought this gun from Sportsman's Guide. I use code WARPOET and I save money. My wife and I went clay shooting and we sucked big time, but I got her this 20 gauge Stoger Condor. Again, I'm bad at this gun, but I can get better because I own it. I have things, you should have things. So go to Sportsman's Guide, use code WARPOET. Now we'll do the video and get into something I do know about, Black Rifles. What's happening, my friends? My name's John Lovell. This is the Warrior Poet Society. And today we're talking about three different rifle setups. I'm gonna take you through a budget accessorization, also an intermediate like a hobbyist, and then there's like, I don't care about money, I want the coolest stuff, high-end, really good bang for your buck. Uh, very first off, we're gonna talk about the budget build. I have a Palmetto State gun. I don't wanna talk about the fact of this and new legislation, just know right now I'm in a grace period, and if you want to talk about all thoughts on this stuff, follow the link above or below or wherever it happens to be. Now into this setup. The gun was extremely inexpensive. I think it cost me somewhere in the high 400. So very inexpensive gun. My experience with Palmettos is, is they actually run, they work. There is more accurate barrels. There is better setups that you can get, but generally, uh, it'll be just fine for an entry gun. I like Palmettos. Now let's jump into the accessories because that's really what the video is about. Inexpensive rifle. This is a 403R. It is the least expensive optic that we carry on our site. It does all the stuff that you want it to. It's plenty tough for application. And so if you're wanting to spend very little but not get such a crummy optic that it ends up being a glorified paperweight that doesn't retain zero, this is the lowest I go on optics. And I think it's it's a good one. The light is a stream light rail mount. This is the older version. I like this because it throws out a ton of illumination and it's very inexpensive and I don't have to replace a tail cap and then get a pressure switch as well. I mounted this to the M-Lock using a mag pull accessory right there to witness the Picatinny to the M-Lock. The last thing you need to add to a gun before it is really done and completed is you got optic, you got illumination, and you got sling. This is our War Poet sling and it shouldn't be on this gun. Instead, I would swap this out, but I don't have one here, for a less expensive Magpul sling. It's obviously not as nice in my opinion. However, I had that between the gun, the optic, the illumination, and the Magpul sling. This whole setup complete would be somewhere a little south of 850 bucks. That's pretty darn good. And this will be how I trick out a budget build. On to the next one. This is my mid-range for the kind of the medium hobbyist rifle. The sling on it here is the adjustable War Poet sling, which has this bungee attachment. And whereas the first one, I'd go for something less on this type of build. Absolutely, I want the best sling on the market. And that happens to be ours. No bias here. Now for optics, I have aim point optics on here and that could fit, that'd be well, but really I would like to reserve the aim point optics for my higher end setup. The Hollison 515 is the nicer optic that really should be on here. I have Unity mounts, that's a little bit more expensive, but I like a high rise penthouse uh, type of optic on my guns. Also for the hobbyist rifle, I've added a 3X magnifier. This is important to me because my eyes are really bad far off. Not just shooting something farther away to be able to identify of like, what is that? Oh, that's a person. Oh, that's a person with a gun. Oh, it's a good guy with a gun. A lot of magnification for me has to do with being able to identify stuff, not just shoot it. Last thing to draw attention to, and I'm gonna camp out here for just a moment, is the illumination. This is a new light to hit our site, and there's two different products you're looking at. One is the illumination tool here, the flashlight here, and the other is the cap here. I love the ability to be able to take negligent light discharges out of the equation. I have almost gotten some very serious, awful stuff in combat zones abroad because somebody AD'd their white light. On the range and just hobbying around, it doesn't really matter, but that can straight up get you killed. And so I had a couple things when I was over fighting in the desert. I made my own little field expedient barrel cap where I would have some cardboard and duct tape and I'd put it on there so I could easily take it off. And if I got in a gunfight, I'd just shoot and it'd blow it off. But I also had a little cap that would go over my white light just so you couldn't possibly ND your white light 
uh, at the wrong point. And right, right before you were doing something, you just take that junk off. This is a really cool option. And right there, I'm immediately ready for illumination. Another benefit to these light caps, which we're carrying, is when you have a muzzle device that's blasting crap all over it, it'll crust over the lens cap. And so now I can protect that during range time. Uh, so you don't want to crud up that and then you clean it a bunch you put chemicals on there you're scrubbing it and now you're you're hurting your light over time and now this thing's here to be able to be expendable and take huge abuse so there's another added benefit this light is awesome it's the new owls light and it has this omnidirectional button where i can push it in or uh, i can push it from the side any side of here or up or left or right. So it's this huge gross motor grab, which I really, really like. So say I'm monkeying with a door handle and I can just come up and immediately go to illumination. It's just grab the rail and it turns it on. And now I'm going to eliminate an additional failure point of changing out the tail cap and having the pressure switches. In my experience, when illumination fails, it's oftentimes the pressure pad. So a couple more things on this all's light. The light allows you to take off the cap and then you can also unscrew the, the tail and then just switch the sides so that you're able to mount it on the right side or the left side just by switching these over. So really well thought through. It'll come with the lithium uh, battery. The bigger light has the bigger battery. And then you can just plug this in so that you're not running through these. These are extremely expensive and the bigger ones are even more expensive. And so being able to have a rechargeable option is an absolute must have and it all comes in one package. All right, now for the expensive one. This is a Cobalt Kinetics rifle. Really like this gun and it's got all kinds of good features. Features I like. So now here you see the similar setup is you have the optics, the 3X magnifier, and the Unity mounts. As I said before, aim points might be on this and the Hollison should be on the other. So again, use your imagination and just say John switched them and it is glorious. And so aim point optics right there. Uh, here also we have the same War Poet adjustable sling. This one has a stock sock on the back with a tourniquet mounted to it. For those of you who see this and you're like, I do not like that bulk on the back. I get the idea of having a tourniquet ready there or to be able to mount chem lights or whatever else you wanted to to this. You would think that's going to interfere with my feng shui back here. And so I was immediately not a fan of this when I saw it. I saw the use and I'm like, no way I'll like that. But I noticed whenever I was going to just get in my shooting platform, it wasn't actually interfacing with anything. It wasn't blocking me out. Even with shoulder transitions, it wasn't blocking anything. And so when I was actually shooting and running and gunning, this is not getting in my way. And so I like it more. And so we got that. On the front, we have a mall laser. This is really expensive. In Biden's economy, who knows, this is probably $55,000 now. Then you notice the Surefire light. Surefire has been the standard in illumination for a very long time. I think there's competitors now that really give you a lot of value for less money. Ergo, that's why you see most of the other stuff I run. It isn't the more pricey Surefires, but on the higher level setup, I'll go ahead and spring for what I know works and what has been top of the industry for a really long time. Did you use those in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq? Or? Yep, I use Surefire overseas in Afghanistan and Iraq. This is a Unity pressure pad so I can control laser or light with it and then a dead air can. So when you start adding up all this setup, holy cow, what the, who does that? I'm like crazy people. Guys, protect your marriage, talk about finances, and if you can't afford stuff, don't get it. Most of my setups are really more in the other two camps and I have precious little stuff that's all tricked out like this. But also remember, I'm not just a dude. This is my profession. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you like the video, share, subscribe, toggle notifications bell to all. Tell me in the comments which one of these three you spring for generally. And uh, really appreciate you stopping by. Train hard, train smart, stay free.